Welcome to this special episode of Frequency Matters, the R from Microwave Update series. I'm Pat Hindle, and today we're going to discuss new radar sensor applications for motorcycle and scooter safety applications as part three, which is the last in our three-part series on automotive radar sensor technology. Here to discuss that with me is Elon Hyatt, Director of Business Development for Automotive Applications at Viar. Welcome, Elon. Hi, Patrick. Thanks. Thanks for having me today. So how are radar sensors being used for safety applications in motorcycles and similar vehicles? Well, it's funny that you ask this, uh, Patrick, because I think up until very recently, uh, motorcycles and scooters, although they are considered as uh, road users and participants as any other passenger car, haven't really been dealt with a sensor type of safety uh, to be added to them. I think it was traditionally being perceived as uh, scooters or motorcyclists are perceived to be more on the adventurous and risky side. Uh, so why even bother to begin with? But that paradigm is slowly shifting, I believe, and everybody on now uh, should be able to enjoy a higher level of safety in their uh, you know, choice of their uh, vehicle platforms and mobility platforms. So we do see safety coming in. Uh, we saw safety in motorcycles being mostly originally uh, attributed to systems like braking, improved braking, improved stability, and so on. But in recent years, we see a lot of new sensors coming in, kind of mimicking uh, what uh, uh, safety radars uh, or other types of technologies providing safety for passenger cars are now being implemented in motorcycles. For example, blind spot detection, lane change assist, forward collision warning, and even uh, a motorcycle version of the adaptive uh, uh, emergency braking or cruise control. So these are slowly being introduced. Um, I think radar plays um, a critical element in this equation, mainly because of today's ability of imaging radars to provide superior perception of what's going around, but also the ability to deal with the specific and nuances of what a motorcycle is compared to, to a car uh, that are unique challenges. And I think radars are better suited to, uh, to meet most of those stringent requirements. So what are the important design and performance considerations compared to automotive radars? Because you're in a much smaller uh, form factor and it's much more open. That's uh, very correct and very true. Um, so. While having a vehicle based on mostly, in most cases, the four-wheel design, it's highly stable uh, while going on the road. And even when taking curves at high speeds, uh, for instance, the level of tilt the vehicle experiences is not very drastic. Motorcycles, on the other hand, has a very a zigzaggy type of approach to their behavior, right? So drivers are much more prone to take risks while taking over other vehicles or they have the ability to really uh, accelerate quickly or decelerate, uh, decelerate quickly and even take sharp turns. So the tilt angles of those uh, platforms uh, are much more significant than cars themselves. When you combine that with the very limited real estate uh, a motorcycle uh, provides to embed any type of sensor, you end up with extreme challenges. The ability to uh, properly position the, um, the road itself uh, while you are maneuvering the motorcycle is requiring advanced algorithms to, to begin with. And, and on top of that, when thinking about the real estate factor, the ability to really deploy a high-end, high-performance type of system becomes a critical challenge because those are usually uh, real estate demanding type of, uh, of systems. So combining that with a very low entry point price of a motorcycle compared to a car, you end up with a very tricky design problem. How do you design a system that is both economically makes sense towards a motorcycle design, supports the variety of the nuances of the maneuvers the motorcycle uh, requires, but also enables that small form factor that is needed to be fitted because nobody will put a large box in front of a motorcycle. Uh, many of those are sold for their design alone. So you have to be extremely 
accurate in that uh, form factor that needs to be fitted. So these challenges are something we tackle quite well on our side. And uh, these are just, you know, some of those key challenges motorcycles uh, impose on the design. So Viar recently released a product in this area. How are you able to achieve the size and cost and performance demands for this type of radar sensor? So I think uh, Viar is uh, kind of a uh, unique uh, solution in this area. Um, not only that we provide a radar technology which is suited to deal with high moving or high velocity moving targets, which are kind of the nature of what motorcycles are. And we are also able to provide a, a high performance radar on chip system. And this enables us to do multiple things that are unique and very valuable for the motorcycle domain. First, we are able to provide the high resolution that is needed to really properly sense what is going out there. It's not just based on velocity Doppler uh, measurements, it's actually 3D imaging to the highest level of resolution, enabling our customers to differentiate between bridges, cars, pedestrians at high speeds. In addition, our design capabilities and the, the fact that we are integrating everything inside our radar on chip platform in a small PCB form factor, actually enables us to fit into that uh, small form factor design uh, for a motorcycle. And combining that with a, an extremely wide field of view, so the number of sensors we actually need to put on a motorcycle for field of view demanding applications like blind spot detection, which in vehicles, for instance, would typically require two separate sensors, we were able to cater with just one single sensor and with one chip mounted on the back of the motorcycle, covering of an extremely wide field of view of 170 degrees on the uh, horizontal plane, sufficient enough to support the demanding blind spot and lane change assist applications. I think what really triggers the uh, advantage in our design is the tight coupling we have in our offering between our low level algorithms and the hardware itself. We're not just the radar chip provider, we also provide the low level algorithms that uh, enable our partners to implement their business logic quickly on top. And those algorithms are tailored to the nuances of the motorcycle environment. And that spells user experience. User experience in motorcycles is key because nobody will opt in for a sensor that will ge ultimately generate uh, what is defined as a sensor fatigue by the riders. They simply stop listening to those beeps and warnings and it just becomes a nuisance. In our case, we are able to properly sense the environment, filter very clearly the false positives that are potentially showing here and there, properly clean the floor on different tilt angles, and really enable our audience, our partners who build the motorcycles themselves to offer products that are extremely user-friendly and uh, just enough amount of alerting to both support that enjoyable, I call even risky type of uh, adventurous uh, riding styles of many of them uh, of the cyclists and motorcyclists, but also provide that extra safety that is needed in case of dangerous conditions that appear. So I think that is really what the, triggers the, the advantages of VR. That was a very interesting demo, thank you. What other types of vehicles do you see these types of smaller form factor radar sensors being used in? Good question, Patrick. Uh, we actually see that uh, you know, real estate and price are king in this domain. Uh, the automotive industry uh, from you know, small uh, scooters uh, to large two-wheelers up to uh, passenger cars and the uh, commercial uh, vehicles, they can all benefit from having smaller form factor systems and with higher performance eventually. Everybody are looking for that holy grail of having high perception for the imaging, but today it comes with an extremely high price tag. Those sensors that are implemented today that satisfy such high performance requirements, they usually involve multiple front-end radar chips along with fancy processing in the back. 
and we are able to all uh, to cram it all into one small radar on chip design that is uh, cost effective and enables our partners to understand that they can benefit both from the high performance we offer in that small design, but also at the price of what one radar chip would cost like inside of a, that sort of a system. So this is an extremely valuable price point and value point because it caters both for the size and also for the price requirements. And this alone is the catalyst to deploy such radar designs into multiple domains like passenger cars, commercial trucks and the vehicles with new regulations coming from the EU requiring blind spot detection in moving of systems as defined by, I think, 2023 and onwards. And also into even agricultural vehicles and, you know, basically it's limitless. Anything that moves in higher speeds and acquires enough radar resolution uh, is a suitable candidate to be mounted with such a system. Thank you very much. That's very interesting and great future for radar sensors. And we like to see how they're being used in motorcycle and scooter applications that haven't been seen before. This is our third part in our series on radar sensor technology. If you missed any of our previous episodes on ADAS, autonomy, and in-cabin sensing, you can check those out at videos.microwavejournal.com. Thanks everybody for watching.